Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here for a huge, huge start to the week for Tesla. I just felt like with the significant milestone we crossed today, it didn't feel right to do just a pre-recorded episode. I wanted to do this with you guys live. So you can see here on screen, Tesla today up 12.6% to $1,024.86. So $5,100 pre-split uh, would be you know, a $600 almost price increase on the day. Uh, in pre-split terms, but $115 increase on the day today. Amazing performance, Tesla crossing a trillion dollar market cap for the first time in company history. So a huge milestone. Uh, I'm happy to be able to celebrate this all with you guys and go through some of the, the big news for today. Uh, but just, just a quick look at this. So Tesla's been trading for 2,800 days, about 2,900 days in the market. Uh, since Tesla IPO'd, and today is number one in terms of the biggest dollar increase in history. So $115 increase. We'd actually previously seen a $110 increase, uh, but this just kind of edged that out barely uh, for the biggest increase all time. Obviously, there have been days with bigger percent gains, but a huge, huge day for Tesla today. And again, crossing that trillion dollar milestone, which that was the vision, right? For so long, um, that was kind of what Tesla's potential was to become this trillion dollar company. And that was a lot of original investors, maybe not original investors, but early investors sort of thesis of where Tesla would end up. Uh, so today it's just kind of a, a really nice opportunity to sit back and, you know, celebrate that a little bit, uh, and reflect on some of the success, you know, a lot of the success that Tesla has had, uh, but hopefully this is early, right? There's still, there's still a lot to be excited about for the future. And, uh, where to go from here. So uh, a lot, a lot to celebrate and be excited about today. Um, okay. So obviously the big news, uh, I think we're carrying first of all strength still from earnings and from last week. Uh, we talked about that on Friday's episode. Um, just the, the volume that we saw on Friday and then the share price appreciating into close felt like that was a good sign for this week. Uh, and we definitely saw that strength can continue, but definitely aided by really big news today uh, from Hertz. So Hertz, rental car company in the U.S. here, uh, has announced that they will be purchasing 100,000 Teslas by the end of 2022, uh, as well as electric vehicle infrastructure. Uh, so we don't know exactly what their plans there are for the, for the charging infrastructure stuff, but uh, I will note that this says initial order of 100,000 Teslas. <laughs> So that's a huge order. Uh, Bloomberg here, let me see if I can get the right page, but Bloomberg here is saying that is a $4.2 billion order, according to people familiar with the matter. Um, so they're assuming that that means that they're paying close to list price, and I that's my assumption as well. I don't think we have any firm, firm details on that. Um, but huge order. I think they said it's the biggest you know electric vehicle order uh, in history. And they're doing a ton to support this too. So they've already rolled out an ad campaign with Tom Brady, who, even if you don't follow sports, I don't think I need to explain how big of a deal Tom Brady is. Um, that's a significant sponsorship um, that Hertz is is getting behind there. So as I said, they mentioned tar charging infrastructure too. So they, they mentioned here uh, 3,000 superchargers, uh, but that's just having access. So if you look at Tesla's earnings report, it does say that you know, they have 3000 superchargers, roughly about 3,200. So, uh, I think they're just saying they'll have customers will have access to that. Uh, and then they also say that they'll be installing a combination of level two and DC fast charging, uh, stations in 65 markets by the end of 2022, uh, more than hundred markets by the end of 2023. So not only is this awesome for Tesla to get an order like that, um, it's awesome to see just the amount of resources that Hertz is putting into this, even aside from just that initial uh, purchase. So you can see here some of the multimedia that they're doing, um, all these shots with, you know, Tom Brady and Tesla's. Um, this is looking like it's going to be a huge campaign. I'm sure we'll see commercials uh, throughout probably the entire football season here with, uh, with Hertz advertising basically Tesla, and Tesla doesn't really have to pay. So at first, when you kind of see this news as a Tesla fan or whatever, Tesla follower, it's kind of like, okay, well, 100,000 Teslas, great. Tesla makes 100,000 Teslas and sells 100,000 Teslas, you know, at this point, every few weeks, which is pretty cool. Um, so this isn't really allowing Tesla, it's not generating extra sales for Tesla, right? 
So on the surface, it kind of looks like, eh, not a big deal. But what this is, is an indicator that this business, another business has vetted Tesla and determined that this is a awesome opportunity for them to be able to invest in Tesla vehicles because of the economic return for them. So it's not like a consumer where the consumer might be influenced by, oh, like I like Teslas because they're cool or whatever. This is a direct reflection on the superiority of Tesla's offering from everything else in the market from an economic standpoint. It's demonstrating that the total cost of ownership um, is superior. So Hertz is making a big bet on that. Their fleet is around 500,000 vehicles, four to 500,000 vehicles. Uh, so they're saying initial order here, 100,000 vehicles already you know, 20% of their fleet, which is obviously a significant uh, initial order. So I'm just kind of looking at my notes here. Um, I mean, we saw, we heard on the call, the Tesla earnings call like last week. Yeah, last week. Seems like it's been a while now, but um, we heard Zach Kirkhorn say, you know, they really feel like there's been an awakening. And this is a prime example of, of that awakening, you know, a business and this is a business that's coming out of bankruptcy too and looking for a new direction. Um, and they've decided that that new direction is Tesla. Bloomberg actually reporting that uh, this was part of, they say that this has been kind of going back a few months. Um, I probably can't find the quote here, but yeah, discussions with Tesla go back months to when the people that were buying Hertz um, out of bankruptcy, at that point, they were already discussing this contract. So. This is, again, an indicator of a new way forward for Hertz, but also just an indicator of, you know, all the advantages that Tesla has and realizing that through a high utilization business, right? Like rental business is, it's going to be, there's going to be huge um, fuel savings advantages for customers. Uh, there's going to be hopefully insurance savings. There's going to be um, maintenance is going to be a huge one for them. I saw a lot of people saying, pointing out that on average, uh, rental companies turn over their vehicles every like 13 months or so. Um, I don't think that that would be the intention though for Tesla. You know, you might be excited about, oh, that's 100,000 order, 100,000 units ordered for every year. But I think what Hertz strategy is here is to kind of try to get away from that, right? Like let's invest in Tesla and maybe instead of getting 13 months out of it, maybe we can get, you know, 39 months, like triple what we would able would have been able to do with, um, other cars that maybe have more maintenance uh, that aren't designed to, you know, last a, a million miles, which Tesla's, you know, doing everything they can to, to make that happen. So the other thing to consider here is these are, these are definitely standard range vehicles. So you can see that Hertz has put together a kind of a, an introduction page here, just explaining all about the Model 3, getting customers acquainted with Tesla as a brand, electric vehicles in general which is obviously awesome advertising, uh, as we talked about, but you can see 260 miles. So these are likely going to be, they're obviously standard range vehicles. And my guess is that these are going to be lithium iron phosphate, which will be nice because those can get charged up to hundred percent, no problem without having to worry about degradation. So I think it's going to be a really simple experience for customers too. Um, and then kind of on that note too, just kind of what we we're talking about with an awakening, this is an awakening from a fleet adoption perspective, but also it offers the chance for so many new customers to get in touch, experience Teslas, whether they're renting them themselves or someone that they're traveling with has decided to rent one too. Uh, so this hundred thousand vehicles, if that's going to an individual owner, it's going to touch a lot fewer people than a hundred thousand vehicles going into a rental fleet. So it's very exciting for Tesla from that perspective where again, they don't need to sell 100,000 vehicles to a single company. There's demand there clearly for Tesla to sell those cars wherever, but um, for them to all go to Hertz here and go into the rental fleet is going to offer just a lot more chance for different people to experience Tesla. And that should obviously help uh, the transition to EVs and interest in Tesla in general. So from that perspective, uh, very exciting. The other thing that's kind of cool to think about here, so it doesn't look like based on that, you know, $4.2 billion order, That'd be an average selling price of $42,000, $42, which is basically the base price of the Model 3 from a couple months back when this contract probably was established. So my hunch is they're paying full price, and that means they're also not paying for FSD. But what's really cool to think about is now that Tesla's got the FSD subscription 
basically structured, they can work with Hertz and they can establish a business model around that for short-term rentals too. So $200 a month, right? What is that? Like six, $6 a day or something. Uh, I should probably just <laughs> quick double check that. I think it's like six fifty. Um, yeah, roughly in that ballpark. So, you know, you think you get a rental for a week and you might have the option to include FSD for, you know, $10 a day or something like that, 70 bucks for an entire week of having FSD. Uh, that's a pretty enticing offer. And then, you know, Tesla can take the six and a half dollars a day and Hertz can take 350 or whatever. So obviously we don't know if that's going to be a part of the business model yet, but again, the structure is there. So why not, right? Why not have that as an offering? It makes sense for both businesses. It makes sense for the customer. Really the only thing is making sure that the customer is, is understanding you know, the limitations. So it might not be a thing that happens right now, but hopefully over time as FSD evolves and Tesla gets ready to wide release it, that can be something that, that, they, that they could do. And then obviously eventually that can just segue, hopefully, you know, what Tesla would hope uh, is that that could segue into this being a, essentially a fleet of 100,000 robo taxis that Hertz is then kind of taking care of the little things like maintenance, cleaning the vehicles uh, and things like that. So there's a lot more there than just, okay, there's 100,000 vehicles being ordered here. It's more of all those other things that kind of are carried alongside this news that I think, again, I think we're riding the tailwinds of earnings too, but I think that's helping push the stock up uh, today across that, you know, thousand, thousand share price level. It's a lot there to be excited about. Um, if you didn't have a chance to see the commercials, let me just make sure that this doesn't yeah, I'm not trying to play the audio here, but uh, just so you guys can see kind of like the her the commercials, they've uh, they've done a couple of them. I think there's some 30 and 60 second spots. And again, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these. There's one with Tom Brady. <laughs> he's getting he's getting recharged and uh, a software update, they say, at Hertz as some customers are walking by. So actually kind of funny. And um, yeah, there are a couple of them kind of captured captioning around like Tom Brady's let's go phrase that he says a lot, I guess. And, uh, Hertz is kind of adopting that slogan too. So it should be cool. And as you can see, like very much features Tesla doing a lot of things, you can see like the screen and, and all those things. So again, this is huge in terms of just the advertising implications for Tesla that they have to pay no money for. So it's very exciting from that perspective. Um, in addition to just the, the actual order. So I think that was most of what I wanted to say on Hertz. Um, I guess maybe the, the one other thing. So Hertz new interim CEO is actually X Ford. It's Mark Fields. Uh, so let me just find this quote that he said. So he's only been in the job for like a month or so. Um, I don't know if he would have been part of the discussions and actually facilitating this deal since it sounds like that's been going back a few months. Um, but his quote here is pretty interesting says, quote, how do we democratize access to electric vehicles? That's a very important part of our strategy. Uh, and Tesla is the only manufacturer that can produce EVs at scale. That's coming from an ex-Ford CEO. I mean, we know that. <laughs> but to have it put out there so blatantly by ex-Ford is uh, pretty telling, I would say. All right, so let's see. What do we got on the docket next year? I've got a lot of stuff to cover and because we're doing a live stream, it's a little bit disorganized. <laughs> well, it's organized on here, but in my mind, it's disorganized. So anyway, also this weekend, huge news that is fading into the background with the Hertz news is that Tesla has continued raising prices. So we see the Model 3 here, standard range now starting at 43,990, the Model Y going up to 56,990. So if we break out our handy dandy price change table, I didn't do charts this time, but uh, here we can see the current pricing. So we saw increases on Model 3 standard range, Model Y long range, but opening price point version, and Model S and X too. So the long range Model S and Model X have both increased by $5,000 uh, over the weekend. So now since the start of the year, the standard range Model 3 is $6,000 more expensive. The opening price point Model Y, $7,000 more expensive. The Model S and the Model X starting point, $15,000 more expensive. And especially for those vehicles, remember Tesla has said that the cost to produce those is going to be less and they're going to be higher production than what the old Model S and X were, which we're selling. The Model S started at $69,000 at the end um, before the refresh. 
and now it's oh, you know ninety five thousand dollars, and we're already seeing Tesla at thirty percent gross margins. <laughs> like it's just crazy. We're gonna see the S and the X. I'm pretty confident they'll exceed forty percent, uh, and I wouldn't even be surprised if they're in that forty five fifty percent range on gross margins for for S and X, uh, and then Model Three and the Model Y. Standard range. The wait times are super long right now. We kind of got our answer for part of why that is, at least on the Model 3 with this huge Hertz order. Uh, obviously, Tesla will need to fulfill that, and that's delaying those. But um, yeah, anyone that wants these vehicles soon is going to need to opt up for the more expensive versions. So on the wait times there, Model 3, standard range plus, September. It's October right now. <laughs> 11 months of wait time for Tesla's cheapest vehicle here in the US. That's insane. And they've raised prices by $6,000 this year. That's insane. Like the demand is insatiable. And as Zach said, it's really kind of actually caught Tesla off guard. Uh, just how, how quickly this is ramped up for them. So it's really exciting to see uh, if people want quicker orders, they can actually in change to these 19 inch sport wheels uh, that moves it up to June. So a pretty significant move up there if people are willing to pay an extra $1,500 and Tesla's margin on that option is, I don't know, probably like what, 70, 80%. So maybe not, well, I don't know, probably in that ballpark. Uh, so yeah. And then if people want it actually even sooner then they got to opt up for a long range um, or a performance. And I don't think it's just the wheels because I think you can get the, the, uh, the aero wheels. Yeah. So Tesla's got aero wheels in stock. That's not the reason they're just optimizing for the, for the more expensive vehicles. Cause you can get the aero wheels on the long range in December, no change there for which wheel you select. So we're going to see margins get pretty crazy. If Berlin and Texas can ramp up quickly once these start hitting. And remember it's going to take a while because the backlog is so many months long now, but each quarter, because Tesla has been raising prices, uh, we should see that, you know, kind of increase. So all the green here, those are price price increases and it's been pretty steady throughout the year. Uh, so I think, yeah, I don't know if we're at the same thing for the Model Y. So it's August and that, yeah, if you get the more expensive wheels on the Model Y, you can bump that up to May. So I think a lot of people are probably going to do that. Um, and it's just going to benefit average selling price and margins. So obviously the Hertz thing was big news today, but this is in terms of the, the fundamentals of the business right now, like Hertz carries a lot of those intangible things like the advertising and um, exposure to new, to new customers. But the price changes are actually probably the bigger deal for the fundamentals uh, over the next year. I think the Hertz news is more important, but just in terms of the raw financials, uh, this will have a bigger impact. So kind of crazy, just the, the amount of news that we're getting there. Uh, the other big thing that happened this weekend, which was a little bit, um, made me a little bit less excited for, <laughs> for Monday. I, I had been pretty excited, but obviously this got overshadowed then by the hurt stuff, but kind of the big story over, uh, Saturday and Sunday was the rollout of FSD beta 10.3. Tesla did roll it out. They did expand. Obviously you guys saw the video that I put out over the weekend and then, uh, some people were having issues. So it seemed like there was some false automatic emergency braking things that were happening on the highway. Uh, and in some instances, definitely, you know, were not great, you know, put people in situations that are, were definitely a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so I think there were also some other issues just in terms of in the city. Um, but that was the big one that I saw that looked the most concerning. So Tesla did actually have to roll that back. And the rollback was a little bit messy because Elon had tweeted out, you know, we're rolling back to 10.2 temporarily. But when they did that, that actually took away beta from the people that ended up installing that download. So then that creates a bunch of concern uh, and it's not necessarily what Elon said. So it's confusing, but all that now kind of figured out, uh, with 10.3.1 rolling out. So I think anyone that previously, my understanding at least is anyone that was kind of in that 10.3 release group now should have 10.3.1, uh, or should have it shortly. So I wouldn't say it's much ado about nothing. I'd say Tesla resolved the problems quickly, but it does kind of just highlight some of the risks that are there in terms of Tesla's approach here because they're rolling out the software to, you know, thousands of people now. And if there are things that are wrong that Tesla didn't catch in sort of quality assurance, um, 
you know, before the release, internal QA here, Elon says, you know, that's kind of why they're doing the public beta, but alongside that, there's risks. And obviously, NHTSA is going to be looking at this very closely. I'm sure this didn't really fall off of their, uh, their radar as quickly as it did sort of with the news. So it just kind of highlights some of the risks that, that are there. But um, as I said, Tesla figuring it out quickly, and obviously that's a strength of Tesla too, to be able to react and do things that quickly, even if the reaction wasn't necessarily uh, quite as what Elon had, had said. Okay, the other big thing, <laughs> lots of big things, we got a price target increase from Morgan Stanley. So obviously, you know, Morgan Stanley gets a lot of attention for their coverage on Tesla, Adam Jonas, the analyst there. So he's increased his price target, reiterated his overweight rating, uh, but the price target has jumped up from $900 previously now to $1,200. He's saying the next 12 months can demonstrate Tesla's manufacturing leadership, a step change in cost slash complexity, and higher growth in the vehicle user base. Our $1,200 price target implies roughly half the company's tar- growth target, a constrained China, and virtually no autonomy. So, so here's kind of what the model says right now. Previously, they had been forecasting just 5.8 million units to be delivered by Tesla in 2030. That would be annual growth from 2021 of 23%. Obviously, we know that Tesla's targeting 20 million by 2030 uh, and a growth rate more in line with 50%. So Jonas is now raising his price target based on an 8 million vehicle target by 2030. And that's only 28% annual growth rate. So he says, why do we use the company's 50% growth rate? Why don't we use it? Uh, many reasons they can get into supply chain constraints, infrastructure constraints, competitive geopolitical forces, uh, a lot of things. Jonas has been pretty bearish on China just because of kind of the, you know, geopolitical forces that he, he notes there. So I think that's a big part of the volume that is missing for, for his forecast. But it just goes to show, right, how much potential there still is for Tesla if Tesla can end up hitting their forecast. He actually has automotive gross margin too, dropping from today's 30% level in Q3 down to 27%. So uh, even this forecast, there's so much room for upside uh, with this $1,200 price target. Uh, They do have a bull case. So (laughs) Jonas also famously had a $10 bear case at one point on Tesla, uh, pre-split, I believe. So $2, but (laughs) the range is different now. They've got a new bull case, $1,600 per share. That's up from $1,272 before. Uh, And their bear case moved up a little bit from from 450 now to 500. Uh, And then there's some of the valuation stuff if you want to pause the video and look at that. But those are kind of the main points from from the note um, from uh, from Jonas. But I think that definitely is a nice little tailwind for the stock today, too. So we did get the 10Q. Uh, I haven't spent a lot lot going on today. (laughs) So I haven't had a ton of time to read through the 10Q yet. Uh, But I did notice some people online pointing out that Tesla has updated their CapEx guidance. Um, So they do say now that they expect CapEx, at least I believe this is an update. I don't think, I think it was four to six billion before. And I think they're now saying they're gonna exceed six billion in 2021 uh, and be between five to seven billion in each of the next two fiscal years. So I'm actually pretty excited to see that. I wouldn't even mind if it went up even more. Uh, Tesla should easily, easily have the operating cash flow to cover this, this level of capital expenditures. So, yeah, I would. Anything that they put more into capital expenditures just means that they found a good way to spend it, right? So, um, I definitely don't ever mind seeing that seeing that line come up. Uh, but that was just kind of the first thing that I saw in the in the 10Q. I will spend a little bit more time with it. They'll talk a little bit about what what happened with average selling prices, what happened with cost of goods sold, um, Elon Musk's compensation plan, things like that. So, uh, but that was all I kind of had time for today. Next thing, so these are a little bit smaller stories, but still pretty interesting. So Tesla China posted this little video, um, kind of just running through, let's see if I can zoom in here at all, um, just kind of running through the research and development center in China. So Tesla had shared a little photo of this on the Q3 earnings call. And you can see just some of the, like the development that they've got. Um, it's a pretty cool video. It's two minutes long, so we're not going to spend, you know, we're not going to watch it all the way through. Uh, but you can see some of the manufacturing that they're doing there. Um, some shots of just like the R&D center kind of coming together. Some of the things that they plan on working on. And then there was also, pretty interestingly here, um, a little bit of a, I wouldn't necessarily say like a teaser, 
but sort of a nod to the Tesla bot here um, at the end, talking about developing new projects, um, not just for China, but for the global vehicle market. Um, and then just, yeah, a couple of teasers there with the Tesla bot, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, and not, not super surprising. I mean, why would, why would the Tesla China team not be involved in that? Uh, totally makes sense. So kind of fun to see that video. A um, couple other, I guess one other fun video here uh, that we'll get to in a second. But there was also this um, this kind of going around today about Tesla China announcing Cybertruck deliveries starting in 2022. Um, I think that that's probably not much to read into. I think Tesla China team is just talking about Cybertruck in general. Uh, if you look at the, the translation, which uh, Tesla Audrey shared here, you can see that basically it translate into, translates into the Cybertruck will be put into production in 2022. So that's probably a little bit small for you guys, but hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, anyway, I'm not reading into that in terms of what that means for the Cybertruck in China. I think Tesla would take it there eventually, but definitely not in 2022, uh, in my opinion. That being said, we did get um, somebody here on Twitter sharing kind of some footage of the Cybertruck. Let me see if the full screen on this works okay. Uh-oh. Ah, shoot. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Let me just zoom in then. So this looks like it's coming from a Tesla store. It looks like they're, they've got some new new B-roll for the Cybertruck, which is always fun to see. Uh, obviously, this is kind of just like a screen cap of a, of a monitor, but uh, pretty cool to see the Cybertruck out there in some different environments than the original B-roll that we had got from sort of the release, uh, the original release. So I'll just let that play. Yeah, that, <laughs> there's kind of a fun one. Just the Cybertruck cruising through a, a grass field. And then there's one here of it driving around at, at Giga Texas too, which we've seen some photos of uh, already. But it's exciting to see it. Uh, and we're getting, you know, we're getting a little closer. Obviously there's been delays, but definitely getting closer. So cool to see that. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't read too much into the, the Cybertruck China stuff. All right, next up here, we got some news on 4680s. This is from uh, Panasonic. So we know that Panasonic's been working on the 4680s uh, to supply to Tesla. They have a bit of an update here from the Wall Street Journal. So uh, I lost my spot there when I scrolled up, but yeah, so Panasonic's battery unit, head of their battery unit said that quote, we've got the technology under our belts now and we're moving ahead with preparations for commercialization soon. So it says they plan to start test production of the 4680 battery cells in Japan by March uh, of 2022. So again, we've known that they're working on it, but it's good to see that they, they feel like they've got the technology sorted. Um, obviously, test production in, in uh, March doesn't really give us a great timeline for uh, when they'd actually be supplying cells, but good to have an update on that uh, nonetheless. And it looks like it's maybe pretty close to Tesla's timeline, a little bit behind uh, to some extent, probably. So next year, a little bit of news on autopilot, I suppose. So this is not really news because we've kind of heard these comments before, but uh, the NTS NTSB chairwoman, Jennifer Hammondy, who is obviously, we've talked about before, been critical of, of autopilot. Uh, apparently, I think TechCrunch is here, sent a letter to Elon Musk saying that, quote, our crash investigations involving your company's vehicles have clearly shown that the potential for misuse requires a system design change to ensure safety. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we kind of knew about this before, right? Like, it's not not surprising that she feels that way. She's made similar comments before. The thing to remember with NTSB is that they can influence, they can't actually regulate anything. So uh, they're kind of just there as more of an advisory board obviously for NHTSA and for, you know, other areas of transportation. So we'll see, obviously the, you know, there's uncertainty just in, in terms of regulation right now. And I think this adds to it to some extent, but I think that uncertainty has been there too for a bit. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, next up here. So we've got just a little bit of other news in terms of Rivian. Uh, so Rivian did file an amendment to their S1 filing for their IPO. And they did actually share an update on production, which first, let's just say that Rivian has started deliveries. Uh, so some of the first customers now ending up taking delivery, I'll say the vehicle looks pretty nice. Uh, so 
you know, congratulations to Rivian for that. But at the same time, production is very low in terms of the production rate right now. So they say as of September, we produced 12 Rivian R1Ts and delivered 11 Rivian R1Ts. As of October, we produced 56 R1Ts and delivered 41, 42 R1Ts. So uh, they've produced, you know, 40, 40, 44 vehicles there in three weeks. Uh, so maybe one and a half a day, something in that ballpark. So production rate is super low. Hopefully they can get that ramped up. Um, but yeah, this is just the very early stages right now. And, you know, there's these vehicles, they're selling them for $80,000, but obviously it's going to cost them a, a whole lot more than that right now with this, this low level of production. So it's kind of like make or break for Rivian right now. Obviously they've got a lot of capital. So to give them a lot of time to, to get that ramped up, but it's, it's very early stages. Um, okay, next year or so, just an update on the, the NHTSA situation with Missy Cummings. So obviously we talked about her being on the Viennier board, so LiDAR company, conflict of interest there. She has resigned, so I wouldn't necessarily say that's because of the pressure that's been applied, but just because of the conflict of interest. It, it may have been planned previously, but announcing that she'll be resigning, uh, or it's been disclosed that she'll be resigning from the board effective November 1st due to the accepted position with NHTSA. Uh, she said in an email to Reuters that she's very grateful for my opportunity to serve on Viennier's focus on safety, to support Viennier's focus on safety, serve on their board. My resignation comes as a result of my recent acceptance of an advisory position at NHTSA. So I guess the conflict of interest there is, you know, removed, but still, obviously, all the other stuff that we've talked about still does apply. And then kind of the last thing, and then I, I did see a couple super chats, so I'll just make sure that we don't have any questions here. Um, but... Tesla Model 3, top selling electric vehicle in Europe in September. So you all know, I don't really care about individual month sales. Um, so we're not gonna spend much time on it, but still cool to see that an EV can be the top seller, even if it is because of just Tesla's delivery wave. Still fun to see uh, Tesla and an EV top the market. And hopefully soon we can talk about that on a quarterly level with the Model Y once Giga Berlin gets ramped up. Okay, before we get into questions though, we gotta do it, right? We gotta have a shot of Tesla tequila for a trillion dollars. So if anyone has Tesla tequila, if you have another beverage of choosing, that's cool too. But I'm gonna do a shot of Tesla tequila to celebrate with you all. And I even got a separate glass here so I can cheers it with you guys. So cheers, congratulations to you investors, to you Tesla employees, Elon Musk obviously, and everyone that hopes for success for Tesla. So And if you guys haven't had Tesla tequila yet, it's pretty darn good. All right, let's get into those questions because I did see a couple super chats. I want to make sure that I don't miss those. All right, this will take me a bit. Thank you, Oscar. Jeff, thank you. Bloodbath, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kelvin. Uh, it looks like a lot of these are maybe celebratory, so I, I do appreciate all those, and I want to make sure I'm just getting any questions uh, before we wrap it up for the day. Thank you, Frank. Irma, thank you. Dan, thank you. Robert, thank you. We've got a lot of chats today, just in general. Yashu, thank you. 
Uh, let's see. And hopefully, hopefully everything went smoothly there. You guys know that I always get nervous with the live streams, but Han Solo here pointing out that there are other rental companies that may need to be fast followers uh, to stay competitive, and I agree with that. And again, that's sort of the the implications that are carried with this deal. It's not just a hundred thousand vehicles being ordered, and that's the end of it. Uh, you hope that it's the beginning of a sea change in terms of fleet businesses in general. Um, and the other thing too is this is taking away sales directly from Ford, GM, Toyota, whoever those vehicles, you know, those rental sales would have gone to before. Thank you, Christopher. Tamir, thank you. Jeff, thank you. I love how it gives the description, just the text description of the those stickers. Ricardo, thank you. I'm about halfway down the chat here, going as fast as I can. Adrian, thank you. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, pointing out, you warned us Q3 was going to be huge months ago. <laughs> Major Milwaukee delivers again. Uh, don't need the nickname, I don't think, but yeah, so I mean, I was looking at this last night. I tweeted about this. September 23rd episode, uh, when we were talking about the Kathy Wood saying that she might sell at $3,000, and I was talking about how that was a little bit misreported on because that's saying everything stays the same as it is today and things have already changed, right? Like Tesla's already shown great, great ability to, greater ability to control costs than expected. But during that episode, I said, be careful with Tesla covered calls, right? And since that, we've had our best 30 day period uh, in nine months. So it was really good timing on that. And obviously today just makes that um, even better because I think we're probably up 35% or so now since we were up 21%, so probably in the ballpark of, of 35% since saying that a little more than a month ago. And I try not to try not to give short-term comments too much, so that was kind of a rarity. Um, Chaos stock here, would you, oh, $1,000, would you buy share options? I can't answer that because it's just gonna be different for everybody, right? You know, if you only have $1,000 to spend, I would buy a share. If you've got a hundred million dollars to spend, do whatever. <laughs> it's just different for everybody. Winston, thank you. That's that's very very supportive. I do appreciate that a lot. Let's see. <laughs> I'm getting to the the Tesla tequila shots now. Hopefully, at least one of you guys was ready to to do that with me. I know one of you's out there sitting with your Tesla tequila bottle at least. <laughs> It is uh it is a little bit anticlimactic to take a Tesla tequila shot by yourself though on a live stream. <laughs> it's awkwardly quiet. Burhan, thank you. Appreciate that. Tesla closes at 124, 1024, Elon's net worth closes at 255, just more proof we're living in a simulation. Hope the integers don't overflow. Matthias, <laughs> indeed you're prepared. I tried to be prepared. I was thinking about how it would just be a little bit awkward to just take it without cheersing anything. So, uh, Linda, thank you. Thanks for all the comments too. Appreciate those. Mark, thank you. Eric, thank you. Appreciate that. Steven, thank you. Sean, yeah. Uh, went a little fast for anyone to get their tequila. I know. I apologize. There is a bit of a delay, but I guess it's delayed on my warning as well. Uh, Andreas, will Hertz use Tesla insurance? I was thinking about this. At first, I doubt it, just because I think it's going to be overly, it would be overly complicated with, you'll have different people renting, obviously, and using the safety score in that type of situation would yield a pretty low safety score, which would yield high costs. So I think Hertz plus the fact that they can probably get a fleet rate uh, probably won't do that. But I guess I'm not super familiar with how rental 
auto insurance works and how much of that falls on the company versus the individual. Obviously, it falls on the individual at, at the end, but I'm not sure exactly how Hertz structures that in terms of their pricing model. Uh, but I doubt they'll use it at first. Just And obviously, they, they can't really do that right now except for in Texas. Uh, thank you, Leon. But certainly long term, you know, no reason why they couldn't. Again, I don't know that it'll make full sense with the renters, but we'll see. Yanni, thank you. Uh, Henning here, thank you. Appreciate that. What do you, what do you pick as the next car format after twenty five thousand dollar car in Cybertruck? I think we'll probably see a couple of cheaper cars, maybe. Um, at least there's the potential for that. They've talked about potentially having. I don't know if they've talked about it, but. We've heard maybe some rumors about maybe a different design from Berlin versus China. And then obviously maybe we'll see something like that in the US too. So we could have kind of a little bit of a split there. Um, otherwise, maybe like a van or, a, you know, I don't know that school buses would be next because it's a lot of batteries and they're actually, there's actually pretty decent traction on buses in EV so far. So I think Tesla will want to do their best to address segments that aren't being addressed which would be, thankfully, a lot of them are being addressed nowadays, but yeah, I don't know, probably like a van seems the most open. Obviously, the Rivian stuff's going on and then the Ford Transit too, but Marcus, thank you. Tang too, thank you. Uh, Jeffrey. I'm glad you set your speed offset one mile over now. <laughs> yeah, that definitely threw off the first drive a little bit. Teha, Teja, Teha, thank you. Jai, thank you. Eric says bottoms up, very smooth. Thanks, Artie. Thanks, Phil. I'm almost, I'm almost, almost to the bottom. Uh, James here saying petrol and diesel prices are going up in Europe. Will it take the cost of fueling to equal the cost of hiring before everyone forgets ICE cars? Cost of fuel to equal the cost of hiring. Uh, I guess I'm not sure on the, the analogy there, but obviously, I mean, we talked a little bit about this when the fuel prices were spiking in the UK from the shortage or not shortage, depending on how you want to classify it. <laughs> People had strong feelings on that one, but um, obviously, yeah, rising fuel price prices are going to play a role in, in people's interest in EVs. Um, Again, though, generally, I think it's a production thing, right? Maybe not for every manufacturer right now, but just in general across the industry, I think it's more of a production constraint than demand. Uh, and obviously, Tesla probably the most in that situation, despite having the best production. Thoughts on Hertz impact on Model 3 standard range delivery delay, or do you think that isn't big than the current delay? So yeah, I do. And I kind of alluded to that before with the timeline being, you know, May to August for standard range in the US right now, plus those price increases. I definitely think that that's factored in. Again, Hertz had said that they've been talking to Tesla about this for a few months now. So, um, and if you go back like three or four months, that's really when we started to see the, the timeline push out for, for the Model 3. I think at one point it kind of jumped a few months and that's probably around the time that they agree to that Hertz deal. So yeah, I do think that's already factored in. Costello, all I have is Buffalo Trace. It'll do. Definitely. Uh, Neem, won't legacy auto have to join forces with someone like Apple in order to compete with Tesla? It's hard to see a true competitor otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys all know my thoughts on that with legacy auto. Uh, for me, it's really just China right now. That's kind of like the only viable competition. Um, yeah. Uh, who I, I see here, so... Thank you so much for all the support over the years, first of all. It's a great supporter. And then second of all, split at 2000. So I definitely think Tesla's probably starting to think about it again. Last time they announced the split around 1500. So certainly I'd be open to a new split um, around that level. I think you always want to split from a position of strength. And we're now in that position uh, with the all-time high plus the trillion dollar market cap. So yeah, I think the splits, splits on the table. I don't really expect anything until like Q3 or Q4, but next year but we'll see uh would hertz get their own service centers slash priority i don't think so for a hundred thousand 
vehicles. I mean, it's a big order for a company, but you got to think Tesla's got, you know, what, a million vehicles in the U.S. now? So, uh, and that's only going to increase at 50% a year. So uh, I don't think they would have their own dedicated service, but I'm sure that's part of, you know, I'm sure they've talked through all those details and, and figured it out. Maybe there's some some small priority or something. Uh, Mr. Raptor made some money, thought I'd give some back. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, I really do. I do <laughs> I do truly think that I, you know, I hope that I provide some value to you guys, help help make this easier and uh, yeah, just help provide good analysis. So I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, Richard, when is Gordon Johnson coming back in your channel? Uh, I don't know. Just go watch last year's again. I think it's all still mostly valid from my side. Uh, is the next jump when bonds become investor grade? Yes. So they're BBB plus right now. If I remember, uh, I would have to look at the scale again. But yeah, the next level up is uh, is investment grade. Um, Roger, thank you. Dan, thank you. Now it makes sense when Giga Austin making Model Three now. So for anyone that's not, we didn't actually talk about this on the podcast, but there was a Tesla manufacturing page that was recently added to Tesla's website and they had said there was a part of the copy there that had said something about making Model Y and then Cybertruck and Model 3, which Tesla hasn't actually clarified yet um, about making Model 3 in Texas. And if you look at the Tesla's earnings report, which I suppose I can just pull up right now, you can see that they don't have that as listed in development for Texas on their little production capacity thing here. It's just Model Y and Cybertruck. Uh, but the copy there did say um, Model 3, and then they removed it. So <laughs> either it was a mistake and they weren't supposed to talk about that or just a mistake and it wasn't actually supposed to be there and someone just, you know, misconstrued something or copied and pasted. A lot of times that text ends up being copied and pasted. We see that a lot in job descriptions and people get all excited about like, oh, there's this new thing happening in one of these other factories that wasn't happening there before, but then you look and it's actually just copied and pasted from a different job description, uh, and it ends up being not exciting. So I don't know if that was the case here, but, you know, just because they had had it as copy doesn't necessarily mean anything, although it could. Uh, Werner here asking, probably Werner, do you think Tesla will make custom software for fleet management, et cetera, then you should be able to incorporate Tesla insurance per booking? So that's a, that's a really good point. And yeah, I don't mean to be too negative on the potential. I guess my, my answer is for initial rollout. I don't think they'll use Tesla insurance, but I certainly think there's a path for them to eventually use Tesla insurance. And um, yeah, using fleet management software could definitely be a part of that. And maybe the booker could, you know, what they could do is they could have a range, right? for insurance where Tesla announces ahead of time that, hey, if you get a 100 safety score or whatever, this would be your rate. If you end up getting a 90 safety score, this would be your rate. I don't know if they could do that preemptively. Um, it might be a little bit confusing, but it could be an option, maybe something worth thinking about. But just in general fleet management software, like I think that's an interesting question. And I think there's a lot that Tesla can do here. Obviously Tesla's very technologically competent um, and fleet management software is definitely something that companies like GM and Ford do pretty well, I would say, relative to the lack of competition. So it, it's kind of interesting just to see like, you know, Tesla not necessarily like getting into that space, but maybe more getting pulled into that space and what kind of developments can come from that. It's definitely interesting. Uh, Ray here saying $1.70 Australian dollar per liter for petrol in Australia. We need Model Y. I don't know what that works out to per gallon, but I'm guessing it's like above six, maybe. Um, okay. Thank you, Umed. Tyler here asking, when do you anticipate seeing Tesla turn some autopilot slash FSD features into level three? So I think I talked a little bit about this before. I'm really curious to see single stack, which Elon has said is going to be version. Actually, give myself, give me one second here. Um, Probably doesn't really make a ton of sense for me to be taking up such a little amount of the window. It's probably a little bit better. Um, 
So when do you anticipate seeing Tesla turn some autopilot slash FSD features into level three? So level three is basically when the responsibility shifts over from the customer or the driver to the vehicle. Basically, the driver would need to be ready to respond if a circumstance arises where the vehicle is not capable of driving itself. So say you need to be ready to respond with like five minutes of, not five minutes, like five seconds or 10 seconds of, of a heads up. But um, anyway, what I'm really interested to see is when Tesla gets to single stack, which Elon has said with version 11, because that's when we'll see how sort of operating in vector space, which is where Tesla is sort of merging all of the eight cameras into one one clip that's getting processed in the, into the neural networks. I want to see how that does on the highway, because obviously the highway is probably the first setting aside boring company tunnels. <laughs> I think the highway is the first opportunity uh, for that sort of competency. So I want to see how single stack does on the highway, and I think that'll give us more insights into how long that might be. Uh, until then, I don't really, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for that. Uh, thank you, Vyas. Uh, Justin, thank you. What do you think about Tesla acquiring an insurance company? Just to sidestep regulatory hurdles. It's a good question. I don't really know. Um, I've seen a little bit of discussion on this and some speculation that that might make sense. But I'm not sure that it's necessarily like the company... I don't know that that would make things any easier, right? I don't think that that just allows them carte blanche to just like go in and launch a new insurance product, right? I think what Tesla is doing is unique enough that that would have to be vetted and approved from a regulatory perspective, regardless of what company banner it's falling under. So I don't think that that would offer any expedited path to Tesla, but obviously I'm not in that business, so I don't know for sure. That's just my intuition. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Giles. If I'm saying that correctly. Rohit. Levine, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Marcel. Tesla cloth coming soon. Oh, man, I wish. I wish I had a $19 cloth to clean my Tesla with. For those of you that haven't seen it, Apple is selling a, a $19 microfiber cloth to clean screens, which is a little more expensive than you can get it for somewhere else. But good for Apple, I guess. Uh, thank you, Anim. Nairol, thank you. Appreciate that. I keep feeling like I'm getting to the bottom and I just never make it here. Uh, what if Hertz integrate their fleet to robo taxis? So yeah, I think like long term, why not, right? Win-win. Uh, Tesla's got a fleet management company right there then to take care of like cleaning and maintenance and uh, just running the fleets. And yeah, turn them, turn them on. Uh, just gonna, you know, obviously, obviously be a bit. Pat, we drinking Tesla tequila tonight. Pat, you might have tuned in late, but you missed it. We already did a shot. Ivan, thank you. Uh, Martin, thank you. Cheers and thanks for everything. Any news on Elon interview with Dave Lee? Be an order of magnitude better than Elon on earnings call. No news on that, unfortunately. And I do, <laughs> just kind of a heads up, there is in November a couple days that I'm going to have to take off just for traveling because I have other things that I need to work on um, for just like a couple days. So I'll say those dates later, but just don't get excited that that's, that's not for an Elon interview when I'm taking those couple of days. <laughs> Just have to preempt that because otherwise I know there'd be speculation. Uh, but no, I haven't heard anything. Uh, Christian, cheers from Norway. Cheers back. Do you think Tesla could reach an automotive margin of 40 to 50 percent with economies of scale software 4680 and the Gigapress? Uh, since you included software in there, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> robo taxi margins are just crazy. So, yes, I definitely think they can do that. I think the more interesting question is if Tesla can hit 40 percent without autonomy. And I think they'll do it on the S and the X. And I don't think they'll get there in the total, but I would, you know, we're at 30% now. I don't see any reason why that can't go up to 35%. Avias, you're asking, Tesla can allow Hertz to use FSD as paper mile. Your thoughts? Urban Lyft follow. 
If they do, what does that mean for Tesla, Tesla RoboTaxi fleet? So the per mile thing is very interesting. And we've talked a little bit about this on previous episodes where, okay, I don't know what the number, like the correct per mile cost is, but let's say, okay, it's, you can turn it on and it's 20 cents per mile or something like that. That's probably too high. I don't know. Um, but that sort of model is, is very interesting too. And I don't think that we'd see it that way right away. But when you start talking about robo taxis, something like that starts to make a lot more sense. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't really have an answer on that, but I, I do think it's an interesting model that at some point probably makes sense to, to go to. And like Uber and Lyft right now, it's a combination of time and mile, right? And I think a combination of both makes sense because both cost. So there's a cost for every mile, actually the vehicle's traveling because that increases the wear and tear on the vehicle. And then there's obviously the opportunity cost of time. So I think having both of those as a part of the pricing model just fundamentally makes sense. So probably will eventually be what happens. As for Uber and Lyft, uh, I guess I don't know enough about their business models. I know Uber's former CEO way back said that, you know, if Tesla did robo taxis, they'd buy 500,000 right on the spot which I was kind of reminded today when we got this big order from Hertz, but I think predominantly Uber and Lyft drivers own their own vehicles, right? So I guess I don't really understand why they would make a big purchase, but I could be misunderstanding and maybe they maybe they do own more of their vehicles than I, than I thought. I'm not sure. Uh, what does it mean for the RoboTaxi fleet? To me, it's not worth worrying about. Like RoboTaxi, it's like bring the value, right? make the product and the rest will work itself out. I don't care really about the business model because it's just so obviously valuable that Tesla will figure out the best way to get the value out of that. So I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care if it's a hundred thousand vehicles going to Hertz or if it's a hundred thousand vehicles going to random people, like it'll, it'll all get figured out and the stock price will go up. <laughs> That's really all you need to kind of know about that at this point. Um, is Tesla sharing its 4680 intellectual property with Panasonic or is Panasonic building a different battery with the same form factor? So we don't really know, at least I don't really know. Um, I mean, you would think that Tesla is sharing a lot, right? Because if Tesla's buying these cells, like they don't, they probably don't want to just have their suppliers go down this route of making things that are very s inferior to what Tesla is doing. So I'm sure Tesla has probably shared a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's honestly, it's probably a good question for the earnings call. And I think it's one that I'd have on one of my questions lists just to kind of understand what the relationships are and what IP Tesla is sharing. Because yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, I also don't know, like, I think one of Tesla's big advantages with 4680s is going to be the just the manufacturing of it. And that's where I'm like, okay, is Tesla sharing a lot of the manufacturing IP or is Tesla keeping some of that in-house? And then you think about dry battery electrode too and all the advancements Tesla is trying to make there and okay, are they going to share all of that? I don't know. It's a very interesting question. Again, probably a good one for an earnings call. If any of you get to the say questions before me next time, because <laughs> a lot of those first questions just kind of make it up to the top these days with the new no promotion model, which I don't mind. Um, thank you, MCB. Did Hertz acquire Model 3 long range? Uh, no, so it looks like it's only standard standard range. Uh, Bryden, thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> Same beard and cap look. The hair's almost getting long enough now where I feel like I can maybe eventually take the cap off. We've just been in that awkward stage for like two years. Edwin, thank you. Maybe Tesla 1500 will take the hat off. Uh, Galaxia, thank you. I love hearing stuff like that. Like that's what this is all about, right? Helping people learn, helping people get good information. That was the initial, whole initial goal. All right, finally made it to the bottom of the chat. Awesome, okay. So that was a long one. Um, great day, Tesla trillion dollar company. Again, just as I started it off, this has been 
this was sort of the initial thing, right? Like Tesla eventually going to be a trillion dollar company. A lot of people on Twitter had, you know, not selling a share till a trillion dollars or something like that. And that was great logic at the time. And it made a lot of sense. And we've just seen Tesla's business uh, scale to a point where not like a, a trillion dollars is anything small or anything like that, but there's just so much still potential. I mean, if you look at, you know, we're at 300 price to earnings right now and a pretty clear path to the forward PE being 150 X, uh, which is what twice the valuation of Amazon and Tesla's growing at, I don't know what, four times the rate, five times the rate. I'm just pulling these numbers off the top of my head. I don't know what they actually are, but it's in that ballpark. Uh, and again, there's, that's kind of just looking at the growth on Tesla's business today, not considering the impact of software really, which is going to be huge. The impact of energy, which has tons of potential. I mean, this mega mega factory, or yeah, I think Tesla's calling it the mega factory in in Lathrop or wherever that's at, um, 40 gigawatt hours a year. I mean, they did one, 1 1.2, 1.3 gigawatt hours this quarter. So that's going to 10x energy storage, which was an $800 million business this quarter. Uh, so if you take 800 million and all of a sudden you're at 8 billion, I mean, the ASPs will go down, but still it's like a $30 billion business. And that's just the kind of the one factory. Um, that's rough math. I would need to actually look at that, but it's pretty obvious that eventually Tesla's going to get that, get to that level. Um, okay. Sorry. I think I missed a couple of super chats here. Queen, thank you. Nick, thank you. Uh, will you be buying at 1024? So I'm pretty much all in guys. Like for me, buying is adjusting my leverage, uh, which I did on Friday at all time highs at close. And it was a good move, but I'm bullish on the company and I'm bullish on the short term too. Anything can happen though, right? Like NHTSA could come out and say, Hey, we're limiting autopilot and the stock could go down 20% justified or not like stuff like that can happen. So just obviously this is super exciting and there's still tons of potential, but you still got to be careful too. So, and Heavy pizza says I should swap to Fedora. <laughs> anyway, to just kind of conclude that thought, I think, I don't think we necessarily like under talk about risks on Tesla daily, but mm, the possibility of that exists. And I'm trying to think just like my own tolerance for risk is pretty high. And probably that comes through in the podcast in maybe ways that I don't mean it to. Like I'm very, if Tesla were to go down 20, 30%, like I'm positioned to be able to handle that just fine. And I think that should pretty much always just be the expectation that those, those kind of dips can happen. Uh, and obviously if you could anticipate them happening, then they probably already have come. Right. So it's just important to understand that just like today, we got this random, random news about Hertz buying hundred thousand cars. Like that works, works in your favor when, when it's positive news. Uh, but there can be negative news too and justifiable or not, it can cause cause big drops very quickly you know tesla there's throughout throughout most of this year there have been a lot of people saying that tesla takes the the stairs up and the elevator down which sort of on a weekly basis was was the case never really fully agreed with that because we see huge spikes up like this in tesla too um but certainly the elevator down part is is true and that can definitely happen so it's just important to you know Think about those things that could be negative surprises too. Um, but anyway, the, the essence of the question is, yes, I'm still bullish on the company and I would certainly not mind buying shares at this level. Thank you, Frank. Arash, thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, John here. For the Hertz deal, would they work on a custom system for them, like a timed access or GPS remote tracking for rentals? Yes, yeah, so that gets back to the fleet management software question. And again, it's not an area that I know a ton about, so I don't know exactly what Hertz's needs would be, but whatever needs they have, Tesla would be very well positioned to be able to meet those needs. The question is if it's worth Tesla's time, right? Like sure, Tesla could manage, develop all this fleet management software for them, but are they really gonna, like Tesla doesn't need to do that to sell vehicles. So is Hertz gonna wanna pay for that? And if not, why would Tesla do it, right? Just to support the business and try to get more fleet orders. 
I mean, maybe. And long term, it's probably a good thing to develop, but there's opportunity cost too. So I don't think it's just cut and dry of like, for sure, Tesla should work on that. Now, hopefully the opportunity cost is low, but yeah, it's something for Tesla that they need to figure out. Okay, guys, I think we finally got through all the questions, so hold off on, <laughs> on any other ones. Um, final thought, I would just say, so yeah. Um, I appreciate all the super chats. I appreciate all you guys tuning in every day. Super fortunate to have this audience. And again, just always super thankful for those of you that are supporting on Patreon. Uh, really makes this makes this possible for this to even have come to be what it is today. Um, and hopefully it's helped along the way. And it might not, you know, we might not have had Tesla Daily without that support. So I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you that do that. Uh, the Super Chats, appreciate those too. Uh, everyone supporting. And even just like sharing the podcast, you know, Tesla's grown through word of mouth too. So if you can help grow Tesla Daily through word of mouth, that's appreciated too. So maybe maybe this week find uh, find one person out there and just tell them about Tesla Daily. That's, that, that's always hugely appreciated uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in supporting on Patreon, um, you can find the details about doing that at www.patreon.com slash Tesla daily podcast. Uh, so really appreciate all that, all that support over the years, guys, and hope everyone has a good rest of the week and we'll see y'all tomorrow, uh, for whatever, whatever we've got in store, uh, for tomorrow, but we'll spend a little bit more time going through the, through the, um, oh, there's all my stuff. Um, we'll spend a little bit more time going through the 10Q too. Hopefully that's part of why I want to do a live live stream today too, is just open up some more time for